Hello there, it's Sandy Alnock. Welcome to week four, the fourth Sunday of Advent in the 2021 Advent series in which I'm making bookmarks. And this week we're going to do the star, the peace star for Christmas. And what I've done is create a PDF in which you can download this and it's got light gray lines so that you don't end up with harsh black lines between anything and can create your own kind of color pattern. I've got my color wheel out so I can sort of figure out what I want to do color wise. You could start with, you know, a burst of yellow around the star in the middle, going to dark colors around the outside edges. I wanted to see what would happen if I started with the blues, because a lot of times you get a bluish tint to stars instead of gold. What would that do and how would that work? So I started by coloring some of the shapes in a very pale blue-green color and then moving to other blues. And originally I started leaving the tips of each of those colors, or each of those sections being white. Not sure if I was going to leave the color itself white or would I fill in another color. And that's one way that you can experiment with things. If you think you might want to add a color in there, then wait until later and see what it looks like. See if you need to add something to tone that down or to fill in that space. The star pattern in here is a lot of fun. You can create a lot of really interesting types of shapes and colors throughout it by just your color selections alone. You can decide which ones are going to be actually empty. And I'm going to leave the center of the star being empty. These are bookmarks, but of course you can add any of them to your Bible pages in order to make a Bible journaling page with them. This one would be a little bit complex to do in terms of the amount of detail in the star, but you could do a simpler star version just with four points on it and then make lines that radiate out from it and then create sections for each of the horizontal lines that divide the color areas. I made mine completely uneven. I did not try to make any of the lines line up with each other because that just seemed very boring and you could go any route that you wanted with something like that though. But I started with the blues on the inside, moved around the color wheel then to blue greens and that started bringing some coherence to that center section but while having each section be a different color. I knew that I could add some layers to this and and deepen the differences between colors as I went. So I wasn't really worried that some of it was looking very similar, but you could also leave those colors being similar. Just do it all in midtones, but in all different hues of those midtones, and it could be quite gorgeous. So many approaches that you could take to this. It also will depend on your amount of colors that you have. Do you have a full set of polychromos or Prismacolor or whatever? Or if you have a set of 12 pencils, you might need to do more layering to build up different colors. But here I've gotten into some of the darker blues and purples. So I'm moving around that color wheel that you can see in the upper right corner. So the, the colors end up at least adjoining each other on the color wheel. And I have some sense of... A transition between the colors because they're blocks so it's not like I'm shading between each section to turn it into the next one so the blocks need to start to build on each other. As I started moving out further that ended up being straight up blues so I had a lot of different types of blues and then that morphed into all the purples. Now the purples I can start bringing now into some of the blue areas and layering over some of the blues so that I bring more of the purple toward the center. And then I can take some of the blues and lay them over some of the purples so that I end up with some colors that go together better. So if you end up with areas that aren't exactly what you expected them to be, with color pencil you can layer over stuff. I'm using Stonehenge drawing paper for this since it's going to be a bookmark. And that allows you almost indefinite amounts of layering. I could layer on this forever using light pressure with the pencils. If you use really heavy pressure, it's going to be harder to do. Now I got to a point where I added all these oranges and yellows and reds, and I thought I had ruined it. So I stopped filming for a while, but then I did the left-hand section 
and realized I really liked it. So I decided I'd turn the camera back on <laughs> and film the other half so that you could see the difference between them. The colors on the left were like the colors on the right. But what I've done now is started to add a, just a coating of a dark blue or a dark purple over top of all of those oranges and reds so that it started pushing them backward and started making them less glaring in terms of like the, oh my gosh, I went too crazy with color. And it really saved it. It totally did. It does mean having a light touch with the pencil in order to create some colors that are dull and yet still retain some of that orange flavor. If you need to add in more red or more orange later on, you could do that. You could also change this whole thing up and put yellow in the middle and work your way out toward the blues and the purples. Go with more intense colors. Lots of different ways that you could approach this, but if you end up with a hot mess like I did, just start to find ways to bring all of those colors back together. Sometimes it'll mean dulling down some of what you've already got in there. And that worked really well for this one. I was really excited with how it came out when it was all said and done. So after all the coloring was finished, I then took a ruler and started going out from the center and tracing over some of the lines, not all of the lines. You can choose, pick and choose which ones you'd like to do. And I started with a ruler for a little while, but then ended up realizing that maybe my hand-drawn lines would be just as fine. So for some of them, especially those shorter horizontal lines, I could end up just making a small mark across some of those shapes. I could outline the star real easily without using a ruler. But remember when you're using a white pen over top of something like colored pencil, you're writing over top of a base of wax. And that wax is not going to allow your pen to be even. If you have even a really good pen, you're generally going to have a little bit of an issue with uh, some of that skipping. So consider this loose line work. Don't try to like force it into trying to be perfect because it's not going to be, but it's still going to be really gorgeous and feel very delicate. Also, be aware that your white pen is actually got some sort of almost paint in it. Like think of it as paint because it's going to remain wet longer than some of the other mediums that you might be used to using. So if you're using a ruler, don't lay it down over top of something that you've just drawn a white line on because you could end up dragging all of that. And that would be a tragedy. Well, not a full tragedy because I have wiped off with a tissue some lines that I've made that weren't supposed to be there and that worked fine or sometimes a baby wipe will remove some of that. But I did find that some of the pencil also gummed up on the tip of my white Signo Uniball gel pen. And I just scribbled off on this side of the page and that tended to get rid of that little blob of wax that ended up on the, the tip of the pen. So that worked out just great. If you're just stumbling upon this video, make sure you go watch the rest of the series from this year because they talk about different things about these bookmarks, including how to use them as a ministry to those who are not believers and different techniques with colored pencil, different ways to meditate through the coloring of some of these bookmarks, etc. And I would love for you to have all of that information. So make sure you don't miss any of it. When I finished all of the line work and everything for my bookmark, I waited for the pen to dry and then trimmed it out so I could add it onto a piece of black cardstock for a layer. The bookmark is then ready to slip into a bookmark sleeve, which will keep all of that beautiful colored pencil protected from grimy fingers, from other pages, from the elements, whatever might come its way. Now, if you have not yet signed up for the Hunger for Hope class, it is not too late to help us fundraise for hungry people during this season or any time of year. I do check quarterly for all my fundraiser reports and make those donations as called for. Would love to have your help in fundraising for hungry folks during this holiday season, especially though lots more information is in the first video in the Advent series. I'll have a link to that in the doobly-doo as well as right here on the screen. Thank you so much. God bless you and Merry, Merry Christmas. Bye-bye.